for joy. All the earth proclaim the Lord, sing your praise to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, I welcome you to the first Vigil Mass of the month of August. And this Mass, we want to thank God for how far he has brought us and we pray for his guidance and protection throughout this month. We offer it in reparation of the world through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Beloved in Christ, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my faults through my faults, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whom, taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare call, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our heart the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. That night had been foretold to our ancestors, so that, once they saw what kind of oaths they had to put their trust in, they would joyfully take courage. This was the expectation of your people, the saving of the virtuous and the ruin of their enemies. For by the same act with which you took vengeance on our foes, you made us glorious by calling us to you. The devout children of worthy men offered sacrifice in secret, and this divine pact they struck with one accord, that the saints would share the same blessings and dangers alike. And forthwith, they had begun to chant the hymns of the fathers. This is the word of the Lord. Happy are the people the Lord has chosen as his own. Happy are the people the Lord has chosen as his own. Ring out your joy to the Lord, O you just, for praise is fitting for loyal hearts. They are happy 
whose God is the Lord, the people who has chosen as his own. Happy are the people the Lord has chosen as his own. The Lord looks on those who revere him, on those who hope in his love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. Happy are the people the Lord has chosen as his own. Our soul is waiting for the Lord. The Lord is our help and our shield. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. Happy are the people the Lord has chosen as his own. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Only faith can guarantee the blessings that we hope for or prove the existence of the realities that at present remain unseen. It was a faith that our ancestors were commended. It was by faith that Abraham obeyed the call to set out for a country that was the inheritance given to him and his descendants, and that he set out without knowing where he was going. By faith, he arrived as a foreigner in the promised land and lived there as if in a strange country with Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. They lived there in tents while he looked forward to a, con a city founded, designed, and built by God. It was equally by faith that Sarah, in spite of being past the age, was made able to conceive because she believed that he who had made the promise will be faithful to it. Because of this, there came from one man and one who was already as good as dead himself, more descendants than could be counted, as many as the stars of heaven or the greens of the of sun on the seashore. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Let's stand for gospel accommodation. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for revealing the mysteries of the kingdom to mere children. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, See that you are dressed for action and have your lambs lit. Be like men, waiting for their master to return from the wedding feast, ready to open the door as soon as he comes and knocks. Happy those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. I tell you solemnly, he will put on an apron, sit them down at table, and wait on them. It may be in the second watch he comes, or in the third, but happy those servants if he finds them ready. You may be quite sure of this, that if the householder had known at what hour the burglar would come, he would not have let anyone break through the wall of his house. You too must stand ready, because the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Beloved in Christ, the Gospel of the Lord.
this evening, and I would like us to reflect briefly on trusting in God at all times. There are at least three categories of Christians or Catholics. The first category belongs to those who trust in God, who believe in God, who have faith in God when they have their comfort, their peace, and everything is going perfectly in their lives. Those who stick to God, stick with God, and go with God when everything is secured and things seem to be all happy. Those who belong to this category are people that when anything changes, let's say there's no more a bit of comfort and security, they despair and do not trust or believe in God, they lose their faith. The second category of people are the Christians who only trust in God or come to God when things aren't working well in their life. When the seen things of sickness, pain, the loss of jobs, the death of, or the death of, 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 of relatives and friends, and those are the times that they come to God asking questions. They come to God seeking that he restore things in their life. These people will only come to God when there is a problem. And the moment they receive answers from God, they forget about God. They are the ones who make God like a cash machine. When they need, they just go for it. When they get the money, nothing to do with the cash machine again by God. And the third category of Christians are those that believe in God. They trust in God. No matter the seen or manifest situations of their life, whether they are rich, they thank and worship God and they trust God. Whether they are going through sickness, pain, and anxiety, they still hold on to God. And their trust is that God has the answers. And God is always the final solution. Interestingly, there was a research conducted and that about 45% of Christians belong to the first category. About 45 belong to the second category. And only about 10% belong to the third category. But interestingly, when we talk about faith in God, it's about those in the third category, the 10%. Why? In the first and the second, people come to faith in God because of the seen things, the things that their eyes can see. So as I mentioned, when there is richness, there is comfort, there is peace, there is security. And then there is sickness, there is pain, there is trouble and anxiety. That is the only time they come to God. But as the second reading tells us, faith is the blessings that we hope for. The proof of the existence of the realities that at present remain unseen. It was the, for the faith that our fathers were commended to God. So really, faith is not that which we see, but rather the unseen. Why? Because we believe that God has the answers. In these three categories, where do you belong to? The first, the second, or the third? Sometimes we may have found ourselves in all these categories. Sometimes when we go through hard times, we question God and think, has God forgotten about me? I've asked God for things and I'm not still getting them. Probably I'm not going to go to church any longer. Probably there's no need praying to God again. And sometimes when we are okay, we have passed our exams, we have had our confirmation, our first communion, sometimes we also forget that what is the sense of going to church? At least I've had my first communion, I've had my confirmation, I've had my wording. There's no more need to go to church. And you should find yourself in these categories. But there are those who remain. 
no matter what they go through, they continue to believe in God. And today's reading commends to us one person that we have to learn from, and that person is Abraham, the father of faith. What did Abraham, why was Abraham commended to us as father of faith? Because, one, Abraham, first of all, lived in a, pra- in a place called the Fertile Crescent in the Tigris and Euphrates River. It was a place of bounty, a place of plenty, a place where water flowed. And so all those who farmed had good harvests. But remember, Abraham was living in this place where he had a lot of respect. He had a lot of wealth. He had a lot of family members, people that he was comfortable with. But it was in this very place that God asked him to leave this place of bounty to go to a place that he does not know whether it exists or not. So how would he leave his wealth, his comfort, his security, his property, and go to a land that he does not know? But Abraham went because he had believed the one he had placed his trust in, that God would never disappoint. Abraham got to a a time that he needed a son. God promised him a son, but it took years. And Abraham might have asked himself, why has God not fulfilled his promises? But in the midst of this, when Abraham did not have a son, and for years that God had promised, Abraham did not run away from God. He did not put God aside. He continued to trust and have his faith in God. Even when his wife, Sarah, was barren and advanced in years, and he was wondering, would the promise of God be fulfilled? He said he trusted, and Sarah also trusted in the God who had called them and had promised them. And remember again, when Abraham had that son that he had longed for, Isaac, God even asked him to sacrifice that only son. But even in that, Abraham trusted and believed in God. Beloved in Christ, this is what God is calling all of us to. Life can be difficult. Sometimes we may cry. Sometimes we may fail. Sometimes the going gets tough. But again, sometimes things work well in our lives. In all these circumstances, moment and situations in life, let us remember Abraham. He put his faith in God because he didn't have all the answers in life, but he believed God had all the answers. And that is a call made on us. No matter the situation and the condition you find yourself in, trust in the God whom the eyes cannot see but who has power over the whole universe. A moment when you cannot find answers to your whys in life, remember, God has all the answers. And this God is telling us, do not fear, for I have prepared things for you. There are things greater in store for us. Let us continue to trust in God. Put our faith in him no matter the circumstance we find ourselves. And his promises, his good things and blessings will be fulfilled in our lives. May the Lord strengthen all of us. May he deepen our faith. And may he grant us the strength that we may not belong to the first two categories of Christians in our world, but belong to the third. And may he bless us all. Amen. Let us now stand and profess our faith. And we use the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, with faith, let us come to God for him to strengthen us so that God's kingdom and reign might be upon us. For the Pope and all who lead us in faith, that they may bring us closer to Jesus and to one another as we learn to live in love. Lord, in your mercy. For all whose capacity for hope has been damaged by the global COVID pandemic, that they may learn once more to trust in God's unseen goodness. Lord, in your mercy. For all who are living in poverty, especially migrants and refugees who have lost all they once possessed. Through our generosity, may they find once more a community of welcome and part to hope. Lord, in your mercy. For those who are sick, especially those in our parish and all those who care for them. May God bless them with hope, patience, and trust so that they may live without anxiety. Lord, in your mercy. For our elderly people, that God may bless them with hope, patience, and a deep desire to be united with their loving God as heralds of hope in the world. Lord, in your mercy. For all who have recently died, we pray especially for baby Simon, the mother of one of our parishioners, and for all whose anniversaries occur this week. Lord, in your mercy. We ask Mary, our mother, to join with us in prayer as we say, Hail, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In silence, let us place before the Lord all that is in our hearts. Dear loving God, our Father, you are the source of our deepest hopes and longings. Hear our prayers this evening and draw our hearts to you through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to Almighty God the Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending thou your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith, when we this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Alan our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, 
who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, especially throughout this month, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sons, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sons of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. The bread that I will give, says the Lord, is my flesh for the life of the world.
Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. May you please be seated for a moment. I'm still Father Francis is back. I came back on Friday and uh, in the morning, um, or, or Thursday rather, in the morning, and I had a wonderful time in, in New York, thanks to your prayers and your support. So, um, and I believe that in my absence, Father Samuel was here and he did a great job and he was a blessing to this parish. So I want to thank Father Samuel for all the support he gave you and for the assistance you also gave him. The only thing we can do is remember him in our prayers and to show our appreciation for that. So thank you very much and we thank Father Samuel. On the front page of the newsletter, Canon Bobas puts down the very things he's been telling us since he came back. So you may have a read of it. The assumption, the feast of the assumption is on the 15th of August, but this year is going to happen on the 14th because we're celebrating it on Sunday. So next Sunday will be the feast of the assumption of Our Lady into Heaven. And if you are interested in any of the pilgrimages this year, please see the inside page of the newsletter. And if you are preparing for marriage, the next marriage course will be on the 5th and the 12th of November in St. Anthony. The details are in the newsletter. Thank you all very much for your presence. Let us now stand for God's blessing. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Have a blessed weekend. Thank you very much. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us a son. Who yielded his life in atonement for sin. And open the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus. Jesus is Son, and give him the 